thank you, Ron. What a challenge for this new year is our hearts and minds are upon the new year and what God has for us and what lies ahead as we seek his leadership and his strength uh, for this year that God's hand would, would be upon us in a wonderful way. So we enjoy the music, the special, and the challenge that God make us a servant. Give us a servant's heart. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3. If you wonder where that is, go to Malachi, back up five books, you're there at the book of Habakkuk, this minor prophet with a major message. I'm going to take one verse tonight, and I have one slide. That's good already. I'm going to have one verse and one slide. I want to talk to you tonight and challenge you for the new year. Of course, uh, we're already into the second week. But Habakkuk closes with a challenge to the people of God. And of course, uh, the primary interpretation is to the nation of Israel as he closes out his book that they will one day be back in the, the land. But I believe there's an application to us as well. For Habakkuk, we'll see quotes from the Psalms and from David. But tonight, just to challenge you, as I speak on hind's feet in high places. Hind's feet in high places. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 19. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. Let's pray together. Lord, I pray that I'd be able to share with your people what you've laid upon my heart. And as you have challenged me for this new year to walk in the high places, I pray that each of us would take a challenge tonight in this new year to let God make our feet like hinds feet. And he can take us to new heights in the midst of this difficult time. But God is more than willing and able. And help us, dear Lord, to follow the shepherd. Use me tonight, Lord, to share what you've laid upon my heart. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I have one slide. And that's all I'm going to share with you, and then I'll give you my outline on that one slide. But I wonder tonight, our people have traveled throughout the United States, has anyone ever been to this particular mountain? Has anyone recognized this mountain? I got to thinking about that as I put the picture up there. But let me share with you uh, the picture that is behind me and where it is and what it means. It's El Capitan. It is also known as El Cap. It is a vertical rock formation in the Yosemite National Park located on the north side of the Yosemite Valley near its western end. Granite Monolith is about 3,000 feet from base to summit along its tallest face and is a popular object for, believe it or not, rock climbers. The formation was named El Capitan by the Italian when they explored the valley in 1851. El Capitan was taken to be a loose Spanish translation of the local Native American name for the cliff Translated, here it goes, Tokak Anuha, which means the chief rock, is really 7,573 feet. And El Capitan is composed almost entirely of a pale, coarse, grain granite in place approximately years ago, they say millions, but we know it was thousands, 
In addition, El Capitan, this granite forms most of the rock features of the western portions of the Yosemite Valley. Along with most of the other rock formations in the valley, El Capitan was carved by glacial action. The nose was climbed in 1958 by Warren Harding, Wayne Mary, and George Whitmore in 47 days using siege tactics, climbing in an expedition style using fixed ropes along the length of the route, linking established camps along the way. Now can you imagine that? Camping along the way? Maybe you camp some strange places, but uh, that would be really unusual. The fixed ropes allowed the climbers to ascend and descend from the ground up throughout the 18-month project. Although they presented unique levels of danger as well as sometimes breaking due to the long exposure to cold temperatures. The second ascent of the nose was in 1960 by four men who took seven days in the first continuous climb of the route without siege tactics. The first solo climb of the nose was done in 1969. And then the first ascent of the nose in one day was accomplished in 1975. But as our story continues, there was a young man who was a rock climber who decided, you know what? I'd like to climb this rock, El Capitan, with no rope. So in 2017, Alex Honnold stood at the base of El Capitan. And it was his goal to climb El Capitan with no ropes. He stood at the bottom and he studied the rock formations for months. He took a diagram, examined it, every crack, every ledge, for weeks, weeks, mapping out his climb. Because Alex knew one mistake meant his life. One false move, one false step. He didn't have a second chance. So he stood at the base in 2017 to make this climb. As I think about El Capitan, I think about what Habakkuk is saying to you and to me, and really to the nation of Israel primarily. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. And I believe for this year, 2021, I believe God would love to take us to the high places. But as we go to those high places, we need our feet like hinds feet. And not only that, we need help if we're going to go to the high places. And as we look at this verse, I want to draw your attention and here's my outline. Our helper, our hind's feet, and our high places. First of all, as we look in these verses, or this verse that Habakkuk gives us, notice the name for God that he uses. The Lord God is my strength. Now, when Habakkuk uses that name for God. Understand that names are important in the Old Testament. Names are important in the Bible. And as he uses this name for God, he uses the name Jehovah Adonai. His name Jehovah. Again, that is one of the oldest names for God in the Bible. 
we're very familiar with it, are we not? And of course, it's used in Genesis chapter 2. But it's more extensively explained to us when God appears to Moses, you remember in the book of Exodus. God appears to Moses at the burning bush. And he says to Moses, I am that I am. Again, this name for God, Yahweh, or Jehovah, is the eternal, all-existent one. God says to Moses, Moses, the great I am is going to lead you out of Egypt. Go tell my people, Jehovah, Yahweh, that holy name for God. And of course, we know the story, do we not? That Jehovah became everything that they needed. The great I am. Oh, there are some people that tell us that Jesus is not Jehovah, but we know that he is. And he demonstrated that throughout his earthly ministry. In fact, he came out and said it on a number of occasions. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the door. I'm the bread of life. I'm the light of the world. What a blessed thought that you and I have the great Jehovah God, the Lord Jesus Christ, with us to be our helper, to be our strength. But notice the name God in that verse that Habakkuk uses is not the name Elohim that we think it would be, but it is the name Adonai. It means that God is our master, our, our owner. When you think of the name Adonai, there are a number of thoughts that should come to your mind. It's the name master. He wants to be the master of your life. It was used in Genesis first, uh, 15, 1 and 2 of Abram when he called the Lord Adonai. He was his master. The word or name Adonai means ownership, sovereign, and obedience. When you think of God being our Adonai and our helper, what a, what a blessed thought to know. Again, understand when you use the name Adonai, Hobart Stevenson said this, we must not, we must not think of the slaves in ancient times. Some were badly treated, undoubtedly. But on the whole, slaves were regarded as members of the household. They had privileges denied to hired servants. So again, when you think of a, a Adonai, you think of a master. And what does a master? He is your owner. He owns us. Our Lord is our owner. And he's our sovereign. When you owned a slave, you could do with them whatever you wanted. And we have a master that owns us. You know what? He loves his children. He loves his servants. Oh, what a blessed thought. To know that our Adonai, he is our owner. He is our sovereign to do with us whatever he wants. And what does an owner and a sovereign expect of a slave? Obedience. Obedience. Oh, what a blessed thought to know that we have a helper. He is Jehovah Adonai. And as we climb the mountains that God has for us this year, we can rest assured to know that He is our helper. Climbing a mountain, you need help. David said in the psalm, Psalm 33 and verse 20, Our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalm 40 and verse 17, Thou art my help and my deliverer. Psalm 121 and verse 1, I will lift, my, lift up mine eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. 
And what a blessed thought to know as we face this year and as we climb the heights that God would have for us, when we get in trouble, we can call for help. In her book, Hind's Feet on High Places, Anna Hernard tells about an allegorical, allegorical story about a girl named Much Afraid whose disfigured face and her lame feet, she wants to follow the shepherd into the mountains and to the high places. She lived in the valley of much trembling. She lived with her family of fearings and lived with her aunt, Mrs. Dismal for forebodings and her cousins, gloomy and spiteful, and their brother, craven fear. They lived in the valley of humiliation. But she yearned to follow the shepherd. She learned to be in the high places. And the shepherd came to her and said, but you can go to the high places, much afraid. However, you must remember that as soon as you reach the slopes of the mountains, there is a wonderful system of communication from end to end in the kingdom of love. And I shall be able to hear you whenever you speak to me. Whenever you call for help, I promise to come to you at once. At once. What a blessing to know as we seek to climb the heights when you get in trouble this year. God's phone number is Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. 3, 3, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. What a blessed thought. Again, she goes on to say in her book, It is true, said the shepherd, that you will have to be changed before you can live on the high places. But if you are willing to go with me, I promise to help you develop hinds feet. Up there on the mountains as you get near the high places, the air is fresh and invigorating. It strengthens the whole body and there are streams with wonderful healing properties so that those who bathe in them find all their blemishes and disfigurements washed away. But there is another thing I must tell you. Not only would I have to make your feet like hinds feet, but you will have to change your name from much afraid. Oh, to stop and know that God is our strength. Would you underscore the word strength in that verse? It's an interesting Hebrew word that's often really translated throughout your Bible in different ways. It's often translated wealth, or host, or army, or able, force, or means. And what this implies is, is that the person's strength or means or enablement is not of themselves. In fact, it's often even translated valor or might. And in this verse, the word strength. Interesting enough, we've seen this word in our study of the judges. And it's used of Gideon in Judges chapter 6 and verse 12. When it says, thou mighty man of valor. It implies that Gideon's strength would not be in himself, but would be in the Lord if he would depend upon him. Isn't that much like you and I? When we lean upon his help, when we call for the shepherd to help us. That word is used by David in 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 33. God is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect. Perfect. Our helper is the shepherd. Our helper 
is Jehovah Adonai. And he'll be our strength when we call upon him, when our foot begins to slip and we need help. There's no second chances. God will be there to help us. And Alex saw that as he realized his climb to El Capitan had to be exact every step of the way as he climbed that mountain. Again, notice our hind speed. Our hind speed. He made my feet like hind feet. Now you notice in your Bible, the feet is in italics because it was added by the translators. The word hinds there in the Hebrew is feminine. It refers to a gazelle, most likely, or a deer. And interesting enough, Hannah tells the story in her book of being there in the Holy Land in Mount Gerizim. She would see the gazelles as they would literally jump from the rocks and the cliffs, uh, almost at ease, jumping and going from one place, climbing the mountains. And God would make our feet like hinds feet. It's interesting in this quote that Habakkuk uses, he is really quoting the psalm. And he's quoting 2 Samuel. If you'd like to turn there, we already read a portion of that, 2 Samuel. But listen to 2 Samuel, the very next verse, 22, verse 34. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon the high place. Again, listen to David in Psalm 18 and verse 33. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Oh, what a wonderful thought to know that God would make our feet like hinds feet so that we can climb to the heights. Now why do you need hind feet? There's two reasons if you're a gazelle. One is for danger and one is for the difficult climbs. You see, of course, uh, climbing rocks, there are dangers. You gotta know where to put your foot. You got a crack or a crevice and it's got to be just exactly right. David understood the dangers of life. He understood at times that he, he needed God's, uh, God to make his feet like hinds feet to make the right step. And as I look forward to 2021, I don't know about you, but I sense danger all around. Danger politically. Danger spiritually. Danger in every step of this year. And I would say as David, Lord, make my feet like hinds feet. I need to make the right steps. I need to make the right decisions. Where should I put my foot? Which direction should I go? Is it here? Is it there? As I climb up, Lord, I need hinds feet. Oh, David knew that. David knew the dangers as he fled from Saul. Which way should I go? Where is Saul at? What do I do? Where should I hide? And even as you know, on one occasion, Saul camped in the very cave where David was. And it is a blessing to know as we face this year. He'll make your feet like hinds feet if you'll look to his strength and his might and say, oh God, 
lead my steps and my path from the dangers of this year. I need you, Lord. I need you. Again, in her allegorical story, she said, it is quite true that the way up to the high places is both difficult and dangerous, said the shepherd. It has to be. So that nothing which is an enemy of love can make the ascent and invade the kingdom. Nothing blemished or any way imperfect is allowed there. And the inhabitants of the high places do need hind feet. I have them myself. He added with a smile. And like a young hart or a roe, I can go leaping on the mountains and skipping on the hills with the greatest of ease and pleasure. It is true, said the shepherd. You need hinds feet to go to high places. You see, why? Because there are difficulties. El Capitan, of course, is a difficult climb. I know I couldn't make it. I'm scared of hikes. To do it without a rope. To do it without a net. It's difficult. And could I say to you this year that this will be a difficult year? But it doesn't take God by surprise. God doesn't say, well, I didn't mean for that to happen. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. God has placed a difficult year for us that we might make our feet like hinds feet to say, Lord, the Bible says a good man's steps are ordered of the Lord. God, there's difficulties, there's mountains to climb, and I need my feet like hinds feet to go to those difficult places, those high places. You see, not every Christian makes it to those high places. Listen to what David said in Psalm 27. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. We need hinds feet because of the dangers. We need hinds feet because of the difficulties that lie ahead for this year. But let me close by saying our high places. Again, not to do damage to the text, the primary interpretation, of course, is to the nation of Israel. And Habakkuk is closing his book by saying, notice he says, upon my high places. Many believe the reference is the land of Israel. And of course, Jerusalem is surrounded, it's on the mountain itself. What we would call Illinois Mountain, you know. <laughs> but the hills and the mountains of Jerusalem, <coughs> Judea, God is saying to his people, even though I'm taking you into captivity because of your sin and disobedience, one of these days I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back to the high places. But I believe we can turn our attention to an application to us. You see, the word high places is the Hebrew word bama means of elevation the high places and I wonder what high places that God would have for you and for me this year you need hinds feet to get there you need God to make your feet like hinds feet that you'll know exactly where to step you say well it's Oh, it looks so difficult. How are we going to face it? Oh, listen, God is our helper. He'll make your feet like hinds feet, David said. And you'll walk upon the high places. God will. 
He'll take you to new heights, new places. You see, the more difficult the climb, the greater the joy when you get to the top. And I'm claiming that for my own self. And I hope that you'll claim it for your walk with God this year as well. You see, Alex, in 2017, stood at the base of El Capitan without any ropes, without any nets, without any help, he decided to make the climb. And sure enough, as he made that climb, they decided to film him. And lest he be nervous or afraid or be hindered by any noise or anything that was taking place in his climb, they, they hid the camera and put it in such a way where it would not be any hindrance to him. It was a special device that had Alex to carry inside his chalk bag. And sure enough, one morning, unbeknownst to his filming crew, he disappeared. As they woke up that morning and saw that he was gone, they knew that he had decided it's time to climb. So they hurriedly gathered their gear, went to the base of the mountain, and sure enough, he had started his climb. He became the first person to solo climb El Capitan with no rope. Made it to the top. Oh, what joy and delight for his film crew, his family, himself, the recognition. But let me say to you this year we're at the base of 2021. We have a helper. His name is Jehovah Adonai. Anytime you need help, he just said, call me. He'll make your feet like hinds feet if you want him to. Uh, as he told Much Afraid, I got to change your name. That name just doesn't fit. And God will help us and give us hinds feet that we can go to the high places. Would you ask God to help you this year? Would you ask God in probably one of the most difficult years? He said, well, last year was bad enough. Oh, but ask God to help you this year, to take you to the high places. Would you bow with me in prayer? I don't know about you, but I need help. We don't have to do it alone. We don't have to be solo. We've got a helper that will go with us every step of the way. And if your foot slips, just call. If you don't know which way to go, if you don't know which way to step, is this safe? Is there danger? Just ask. He'll be there. He promised. Much afraid. I'll be there. Just call. The shepherd, he will lead us to the high places. Father, we thank you for last year and how you've helped us. We thank you for this year and how you promised to help us again. Take us to the high places. Make our feet like hinds feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Four seven.